Hey everyone, Dr. Nelson here. Sorry if I'm squinting a lot. I'm having terrible pollen reactions, so my vision is not great today. So if I give you some strange expressions, not trying to be strange, I'm just having a lot of uh, allergy issues today. So I am with uh, somebody who's very near and dear to my heart. He will be marrying my daughter uh, June 12th. He is Landy Phillips. Landy, thank you for doing this with me. Uh, Landy is a world-class athlete uh, in a number of ways. He's one of these guys that is incredible. He was an amazing runner, and he's really an incredible lifter as well. I'm sure you, you wrestle too. Yeah, you wrestle. I'm sure you were amazing at that too. Very, he's one of these people who's a real renaissance man. He's brilliant, he's incredibly athletic, has a heart of gold, and everybody wants to steal him away as their friend. Easy to understand, he's an amazing man. However, last, was it two years ago, Landy? Two years ago. Two yeah. years ago, Landy was in a terrible automobile accident, shut down the whole freeway in St. Louis. Uh, what happened was somebody had something, some debris come out of their truck, landed on the expressway, blew the tires out of all the vehicles that hit it. Landy's vehicle was one, and you were doing 70 miles an hour. Oh. Was that about right, Landy? Yeah, it was just right under 70 miles an hour. Right under 70 miles an hour. So you were hit by another car on the side? Is that what happened? So it was a seven car accident. Um, the first five were in a line that we were pump, bumped out of the line, line and then smashed from behind with oncoming traffic. Okay. Yeah. So once again, very, very powerful man. He's done a four times body weight uh, deadlift and huge bench press, huge squat. So what happened was he hit with such force that he uh, cracked his acromium and, and uh, distal collarbone uh, almost in half. So he does not have use of that shoulder like he once did. And he lives in Missouri. I live here uh, in, in Atlanta. So I haven't been able to see him. So I want him to be able to go back to more heavy lifting. So we're going to do a quick analysis and I'm going to show you some creative ways to get the shoulder working again. Okay, lady, let's just do some interesting tests here. And we're going to look mechanically now. I'm not going to do a lot of neurologic work with him because he was impacted very hard, right? So, Lane, put your fingers out here. We're going to see what's going on here. Okay. So, we're looking for specific nerve root levels that are compromised that I have to correct. So, the muscles associated with the, the uh, upper thoracic shoulder and cervical spine are intact. Lane, put your fingers together here and push here. So, once again, this is a super powerful guy. And he has some motor loss here. Push down here. So, I'm trying to get a feel for what I need to correct. Landy, put your uh, arm here and push up against me, sir. Let's see, look at this. I mean, this is a monster. This is a guy, like I said, that could deadlift four times his body weight. Push down here. So bicep, uh, intrinsics of the hand aren't working great. Tricep isn't working great. So I'm gonna show you some really fascinating things and some of you are gonna look at this and go, what? But this is my work, it's called torque reset. Now we're gonna palpate his shoulder. We're gonna find out what's working, what's not. <sighs> We're going to look at internal rotation of the humerus, and he has almost none. Laney, I'm going to step in front of the camera here. Bear with me. Very good, normal internal rotation of the humerus, and almost no external rotation. Okay, we're going to palpate the collarbone, and it is basically frozen. He has no motion here. Okay, we know that you have the subclavius muscle underneath the collarbone, and as you bring the arm up, the collarbone should actually roll or rock up and down. Now, I don't know if you can lean, would you mind rotating a little bit this way? Here's the AC joint, and he has no motion, once again. So very limited range of motion. Landy, are you able to lift this over your head? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do now is I don't want to create a real long video. If any of you have any questions, I can always do another one. We're going to come in here and start doing some interesting mechanical alterations. So I'm going to start here. We're going to check these joints, MCP joint compromise. Watch how I do this. I'm going to come in. This is called crimping. I'm going to come in. How's that feel? Mm -hmm. Wrist, radial head, uh, proximal roll of the carpals, very restricted here. I take him here. He has almost no internal rotation here. Okay? So I'm going to come in here. Listen. I reset his carpal bones. Now, Landy, what do you think of this? <laughs> Better. Right? Now, if... The distal head of the radius is stuck, proximal head will be as well. So as I take my hand here, I put it on the radial head, he has no spring at all. I'm gonna come in here again. I'm gonna grab the radial head, bend his arm, relax here, lady. Really stuck. Whoa. There it is. That was really stuck. Really stuck. Now move that around, see how that feels. 
Uh, that feels great. Now, lady, let's do some of these tests again real quickly. Push up really hard. And what do you think of that? That's lovely. Now, Lainey, fingers together. Push up here. Beautiful. Push down. What do you think? I'm missing the muscle. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Now push. Okay. Much better. Am I right? Now push down. Much better. You like that? Yeah. That now we're going to do something interesting. You see, when you have these mechanical distortions, you have a phenomenon that occurs where you get ineffective tracking of the muscle fibers. So we're going to take uh, his big bicep here. And I, can you see this? So my son is recording this. Lane, you <laughs> drop your hand in, in your form, excuse me here. Now I'm going to take his arm and I'm going to push it this way. There's no motion. The bicep should be able to move side to side both ways freely, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore proper tracking of this muscle. You drop right here. Hang on. There it is. Do you feel that? Yeah. Now, drop this completely. His power output in curls or gripping something like if he has to deadlift is going to be immeasurably greater than it was. Now, now we're going to get really creative. Let's see how much difference we've made, if any, to a shoulder girl. I'm going to take him in internal rotation. Look at this. Now, I haven't even done anything directly on the shoulder, but we've done everything downstream. The last thing I did made a big difference on the on the shoulder movement, okay? Now look at this though, Lanny. Still no external rotation of the humeral head. So I'm gonna come in here, it's hugely muscled here. I'm gonna come in on his AC joint, boom. See, I wanna explain something. This system I've developed called Torque Reset is so gentle. At any time did you feel threatened when I did that? No, not at all. See, that's why it's so easy. That's why I can walk up and go boom, 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 because it's not a threat to the person. They don't go into a, symp a sympathetic state, uh, where, meaning they go into fight and flight, and then they get afraid and, and everything locks down. So look at this now here. Now that's moving. Now let's check the sternoclavicular joint, nothing. So I'm gonna come up here. Lady, would you mind turning your head and looking up here? I'm gonna come in here, sternoclavicular joint. There we go. Now, what do you think of that? Now, this, will one day again hold four or 500 plus pounds in the bench. Now, I'm gonna come in here. We're gonna check first rib and it is completely stuck. Let's see if I can come in here, reset lowest cervical vertebra, first rib, and T1 on this side. Now, turn you <sighs> That's lowest cervical, first thoracic, first rib. Now turn your head. You want to feel power again? Feel this. Push down. <laughs> Push here. How does that feel? Oh, like freedom. Freedom. <laughs> now, look at this. Moves, moves, moves. Okay, look at this. Now, I'm gonna do this. I don't usually have to do this, but he was hit so hard. He has a similar distortion on this side. His first rib is really stuck, so we're going to reset his first rib. I'm going to come in here on the first rib all the way down here, and one more. There it is. Now, now how do you feel here? See how beautifully that springs? Wonderful. Look at this. There we go. That's an atlas adjustment. Look at this. Now, now we want to hit the shoulder itself. So pec minor is ridiculously tight. I'm gonna do a little bit of torque reset in here. I'm gonna free this up like this. Now, what I have to do is I have to get his shoulder blade to come back down. It's fixated like this. I may have to have him lie face down for this. I'm gonna come in here. There we go. And here, torque reset, boom. Okay. Landy, if you don't, don't mind, sir, bring your hands over your head now. <laughs> this is a lot better. Wow. You like that? Yeah. It's not stuck, actually. Not, it's, not, it's not stuck at all. So the pop you may not have seen was I went here uh, on his upper trap, or on his trap, I should say, supraspinatus muscle, and, uh, and some of the others, the scalenes, and I did a torque reset, released it, and his shoulder blade dropped out. Thank you very much. If you like this, let me know. And I'll be happy to post more, more examples of my torque reset system. Have a great weekend.